We are talking stress today. Not that any of you have any kind of stress right now. Am I right? Yeah, there's nothing going on in the world. It's not the holiday season. You have zero stress. But many of you might be feeling like your thyroid is out of whack or like your thyroid medication isn't working quite right. Are you with me yet? You know, you are the ones that are sitting back and you're saying a couple different things. Number one, okay, I'm gaining weight and I was doing just fine and I was optimized and I was cruising. And all of a sudden you start to go haywire and you're like, what the hell is going on right now? And then other people might be like, you know what? I feel almost too wired. I feel like I'm on too much medication. I feel like I drank five cups of coffee. And it's that handling of the stress that can wreak havoc on your body, wreak havoc on your thyroid. So this is going to be a game changer for you. And you can probably hear the excitement in my voice. The latest introduction, the latest member of the family to the fixer line is metabolism fixer. And this, oh my God, I formulated this just for all my people out there that need to lose weight, that need help in the weight loss department, that can't lose weight no matter what they do, that feel like they have a slow metabolism and it might be thinking of trying all those peptides out there. You know, the Beverly Hills soccer mom drug of choice for weight loss peptides. Or even if you're on them already and you're like, man, these are really expensive and I'm still not losing weight. Add in metabolism fixer. Here's what I did. I took the power of T2, which increases your basal metabolic rate while you are sitting there watching Netflix. You're burning fat while you're watching Netflix. I combined it with a very unique patented ingredient called Suppressa. Suppressa has multiple clinical trials backing its efficacy in reducing your appetite, decreasing snacking, and providing way more control over your food intake. It is amazing. We also see improved emotional well-being, just decreased food cravings all around, reduced hunger, and weight management. Add on top of that, we have green tea extract, we have purple forest purple tea extract, both of which affect the metabolism in a very positive way without the jitters of normal fat burning supplements out there from the 1980s and 90s, right? The ones that made you feel like you're having a heart attack. You will not have that in any of my supplements, thyroid fixer or metabolism fixer. But metabolism fixer, ooh, yeah, we kicked it up a notch. It is in powder form, so you can drink it through your day. It's gonna flavor your water. We got orange crush and refreshing citrus. I love them both. It is going to keep you under control all day long. So you throw a couple scoops in your water bottle in the morning, throw a scoop or two in your water bottle throughout the day. You will have fat burning and appetite control the entire day for what? An eighth of a price of the peptides? Oh my God, you can't go wrong. So grab some metabolism fixer today. Please let me know how you do on it. I am super excited for you. Super excited. So that is why today I am bringing you a very special guest. My dear friend, Dr. Irene Kopp, she specializes in this. Oh, she's looking so beautiful. Let me bring you in. Oh, look at you. You look gorgeous today. Thank you. So, beautiful. Yeah. Irene, welcome. Thank welcome. you for joining us and bringing us your wisdom on this topic that, I mean, let's face it. We're we're in a world of stress right now. So I would love to know more about you. Tell the listeners about you. Tell them how you came into this space of helping people. And then we're going to tie this all like to thyroid and weight and hormones and have fun with it. Oh, love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Dr. Amy. So yeah, good question. How did I end up doing what I'm doing? I was first and foremost a chiropractor, a doctor of chiropractic, also practiced acupuncture. I was a neurophysiological meditation instructor and single mom and who thought I was superwoman on top of the world, 
working like a workaholic when I didn't have my two young sons on the board, of the PTA board of the business improvement. So you get the idea, right? <laughs> not overdoing it at all. No, not in the slightest, not <laughs> in the slightest. And one day I was driving north. I live in Canada, folks. Mm -hmm. And, and I was driving three and a half hours to visit a dear friend of mine. Long story short, the road curved and I kept driving straight into a massive three-story rock face because I had lost consciousness because of a physical condition that I didn't know I had. And that physical condition was because I was physically burned out and didn't know it. Mm -hmm. Now, I broke 10 bones. My youngest son, who was four at the time, had a catastrophic brain injury. My six-year-old son automatically had PTSD because there were adults vomiting at what they were witnessing at the scene, let alone him. And it was during the first SARS quarantine. Like, remember SARS? I know it was like a blip. Yeah. It was like the first COVID, but like, yeah, it was, it was oh, actually God. more virulent. So it didn't last as long. So I was in hospital on SARS quarantine and in one hospital and I was going crazy with fear for my kids because I couldn't see them. I didn't know, like it took two weeks for them to decide that my youngest son was even going to live, oh, let God. alone what he would be left with. And I was getting these reports that my six-year-old son was being constantly suspended from school, threatening to hurt others, threatening to hurt himself. And in amongst this fear and also being by myself because I couldn't have visitors, I was literally spiraling down in guilt and shame and remorse. Like what kind of mother was I? What kind of doctor was I to not know? What kind of monster? was I and it truly was the lowest moment of my life that you know did I deserve my kids was I a danger to them was I an incompetent mother did I deserve to live and in that darkest moment I literally and I'm bawling my eyes out and I realized I had a choice I could continue to spiral down and I could give up and say, you know, to my inner judge and jury who had convicted me and said, you're worthless. Mm -hmm. You know, you're right. I don't deserve them. I should just let their dad have it, have them. And I should never have anything to do with them again. I should, you know, fall off the face of the earth. I should suffer. Or I could give myself the grace to understand that far from being a monster, I was simply doing what millions of others were doing at that time and even more so now. We can honestly say billions of people are doing now. And that was that I was burned out. And I was burned out because I was doing my best for my kids, for my patients, for my community. In other words, I was giving, giving, giving until I was bled dry. And, and I recognized that I was the perfect person to take this on. And I call it, say take this on because it is a cause. Call me a rebel with a cause because we are programmed in society that we must achieve to be worthy. Yeah. That we have to, as women especially, apologize if there's men in your audience, we women especially are, are programmed that we are supposed to be martyrs. Mm -hmm. yep. And give to everyone else before we give whatever little crumbs are left over to ourselves. It's expected in our society, right? Work, 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 work. Yep. And, you know, God forbid you take time off. And there's a shame and stigma associated with it that if, if we are, if we dare even say, hey, I need help, then we are weak. Mm -hmm. We are a failure. Simone Biles discovered this in the Tokyo Olympics just recently where, you know, she's already proven herself. 
And then when she got the a case of the twisties because she felt burned out and had mental health concerns and fears for her safety because of it, the senator, I believe, of Texas was like, well, if you just wanted a vacation, take it on your own time, you see. Like that was in essence what he said. There were top podcast hosts and, and broadcasters who tore strips off her verbally because she obviously didn't have what it took. And this is what they were saying about somebody who is, I believe, the most decorated gymnast in history. Mm -hmm. In other words, there is a shame and a stigma that I am determined to eradicate. And I'm determined to eradicate burnout because it truly is a hidden silent pandemic that is far more dangerous. And I'm going to be sacrilegious here and say, this isn't political. It's far more dangerous than COVID because it causes or aggravates and contributes to our top killers worldwide. Our top 10 killers worldwide every mm -hmm. single year. And that's just going to skyrocket now more than ever with the chronic stress, the strain, yep. the uncertainty of yep. COVID. And so when I was lying in my hospital bed, I realized that with my clinical background, my education, and then my personal experience, that I was the one to deliver that message and to show people the way out. And so fast forward, fast forward 18 years, I went searching for the answers, number one, on how to heal my family, because my youngest son, once they decided he was going to live, I was told he would never walk again, he would never talk again, and he would never pass <sighs> high school. Oh I'm happy to say he is a poster child for neuroplasticity. He not only walks and talks, he's in his fourth year of engineering at one of the best schools in Canada. <gasps> That's amazing. Thank you. My, <sighs> my oldest is doing great. I have surpassed all prognoses and it took work and it took belief and it took searching for the answers because conventional medicine and Dr. Amy, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, mm -hmm. conventional medicine does not recognize the ability of the body to heal itself and that there are answers, even if conventional medicine doesn't have it. Because when I suggested to the neurosurgeon that neuroplasticity could be at play. He went, no, you don't understand. The brain tissue is gone. I tell you it's gone. And I've seen the spec scans. My youngest son is missing literally like a third of his left hemisphere. That's about 20% of your brain. If, if for those mathematicians, don't ask me to be a mathematician. Right. And neuroplasticity means that other parts of the brain have taken, taken it over. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to to let you know that so you don't get hung like, oh my gosh, my first son. No, he's doing awesome. He really is. He's doing awesome. They both are. No, I'm glad you shared that. Yeah, because I'm sure people are wondering, because this is a powerful story. Yes. And and the reason I tell that story is not for the, the pity party part of it and the poor us. It is for people to know that if those answers helped my family and me heal against all odds, Mm -hmm. then it is, I, I then turn around and use those answers to help my clients for many, mm -hmm. many years. I, and I, and when I say search for answers, I have something like, well, I went back and got my medical degree and became specialized in brain injury so that I could go head to head with the, or toe to toe with the experts yep. on, on the subjects. I got like six or seven coaching certifications and I'm not bragging. I'm saying I went looking for the answers because it was absolutely a non-negotiable that I not help my family heal. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what I realized after I helped them heal, and then I started working with my clients and I was getting so-called miraculous results on everything from severe pain to neurological conditions to to autoimmune to, and I was like, what do you mean? This, is, this isn't this is rocket science. The answers are there. You just have to go find them. And I truly believe it's it's not, I, I'm not some holier than thou. It's, it's that I went to the trouble and invested my time, energy, and money into finding the answers. 
So fast forward 18 years and I'm bringing that out to the world and showing people that they can shift from stress to success Mm -hmm. in every area of their life because true success is an inside job and it is just career and wealth. It's your health and energy. It's your relationships, your personal life, because you cannot truly have success in one area of life without having it in every other area. If you believe that, you're deluding Mm -hmm. yourself. Yep, absolutely. I agree. And that is why I'm here because stress impacts us very, very physically. And that includes causing and contributing to autoimmune conditions like thyroid. Mm -hmm. And that is why I am so happy to be here with you, Dr. Amy. I'm so happy you're here. Let's just unpack your story. A, number one. That's the first time that I've heard that. So Dr. Irene and I have known each other for a while. I have not heard that powerful, powerful story before until right now. So I'm just blown away. And, but it, you know, it explains why you're here. We all do a pain to purpose story. I I couldn't compare the pain that I went through with undiagnosed hypothyroidism with the pain of being in a car accident with your children. I mean, that is intense. And, and, but that is what brought you into the space. And, you know, sometimes things do happen to us to lead us into a place to help others. And that's exactly the path that you're on. It's amazing. I'm so grateful that your family is okay Mm -hmm. and that your kids are doing well, but how much learning you had with them and with yourself through the years is, I mean, you can't even you can't even pay for that kind of learning. You know, I mean, you, you got the book knowledge and then you got to apply it. So that's incredibly powerful, but I want to go back to the day that you, or what you were doing prior to that accident, you were overworking yourself and, and let's sit there for a moment because there are a lot of type A drivers that listen to this show you know, we're all there, even if you're, you don't have to, don't think that you have to be an entrepreneur or you have to be a doctor or a lawyer or anything like that to be under stress. You could be a mom, which I think is the hardest job in the world. And you could be running your household and you could be dealing with mask mandates and vaccine mandates. And your kid can't play with these kids and your kid's not doing well in school because he's cyber school half the time and in school half the, I mean, you're trying to clean the house. I mean, it could be that and you're burning the candle at both ends. So Let's talk a little bit about that type of stress that you were under. And what do you think happened to your body? Do you think it was a cortisol crash? Do you think you had like a a, a blood clot? I mean, what what happened? Mm, I love it. And and I, I want to back up one moment and totally agree with you that I know doctors tend to think that we're immune to everything. Mm. We're not. We that's why doctors make the worst patients. <laughs> right? Because we think we have all the answers and, and I'll include myself in that. I'm a recovering programming of that. And I have what I lovingly call my real life heroes. And to me, real life heroes are ordinary people doing extraordinary things because they see the need and because they believe they can. And to me, that is the definition of a mom every single day. Yeah. I don't know of a single mom that would not, you know, give their life for their child mm-hmm. and dads too. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's not just, it's not just what we consider to be heroes, like the astronauts or the firefighters or the, right. or even the first line responders. They're amazing. And I love them. And when you have that special, that calling, that purpose, driven life that you already want to give and contribute and that is our nature and then you add in that special calling where we just want to give and give because guess what our population needs us whatever our population is it may be our children mm-hmm. it may be our students as a teacher it might be our patients or clients yep. whatever it is it's like we we're there we want to help them right? That's why we're there. And at the same time, what I recognized, because even then, Dr. Amy, I did everything right. 
you know, I was a doctor, a chiropractor, so I was already holistic. Right. Right. And Mm -hmm. I say holistic practitioners are like the original functional medicine practitioners. Right. Absolutely. The root cause and, and lifestyle. So I ate right. I, I slept well, aside from the fact that I had two young kids, right? Right. I, I exercised, I did yoga, I meditated. I mean, as a meditation instructor, I did all the so-called self-care stuff and I'm not dissing self-care. It's very, very important. What I realized, and I had a lot of time on stars quarantine to think, because I literally, I was on total bed rest, could not move like at all. And because I had broken both sides of my pelvis and a whole bunch of other bones. So in all that time, I had to think about why did this happen? Why did this happen? I don't understand why it happened. And that introspection, that time gave me the ability to see that I was set up for failure. And I'll explain that, that we are designed for success. When you think of a baby who is born with its own set of of special gifts, talents, and genius. I don't care if they have Down syndrome or what. It's like we all have our special gifts that Mm -hmm. we are born with. And we have an innate need to grow into the full potential of that. A baby knows that. That's the genius of a baby. They don't feel content just to lay on their back and coo and have somebody, you know, do everything for them. The human race wouldn't survive, number one. Where they they innately know, no, I want to roll over. I want to sit up. I want to crawl. I want to walk. I want to talk, you know, and I want to go to school and and I'm I'm excited to go to school and then get a car, you know, and drive a car. We we constantly want to grow. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the way, we are set up for failure by the mostly well-meaning fear-based programming teachings and beliefs that are installed in us, we download like sponges as as children. And it's that programming that sets us up for failure. Thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. You have to achieve to be worthy. Yes, right. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. It is a huge, huge, huge big one. You mm-hmm. have to care what people think about you. I, I came from an abusive childhood. So with a father with PTSD as, as a veteran and, mm-hmm. you know, he did what any good soldier did at the time, you know, he self-medicated with alcohol and took his rage out on his family and didn't even remember mm-hmm. afterwards. Yep. Right. So I learned very early on that I had to be perfect or don't show up at all. How many of us are in that, even if it's not that specific scenario, mm-hmm. how many of us learn that we have to be perfect And then add in those little idiosyncrasies of being a child with no logic. Well, I'm to blame that mommy got sick or that my parents are fighting Mm -hmm. or that they separated. In other words, if I were a good girl, if I were a bad boy, we would all be happy. I know as a child, this is the twisted logic of a child, but it gets internalized. It does. It does. And we carry those burdens with us, thinking that if I were a better person, if I got that that extra 10%, Mm -hmm. I I would be, I would make my family happy and they wouldn't fight. And then you add on top of that media and social media, and it's just getting worse with the filters. It's just getting worse that you can basically Photoshop yourself on your phone. It's just getting worse with more and more reality TV shows that now it's, you have to achieve a certain look. Your body has to be a certain way. And of course you and I experienced that when we were young, even with, you know, Barbies and and teen beat magazine and whatnot and Cosmo, but, but it's so much more pronounced now with social media that you have to be perfect. You have to look a certain way in order to be accepted. And that's just adding a whole nother layer on to whatever was ingrained as a child. And I see this a lot with my patients, even when, even though I'm dealing with thyroid and hormones, I want to know what kind of stressors they're dealing with in their life. And the things that I see written out, I'm sure are not surprising to you, but sometimes they make my jaw drop of how much trauma and stress people have been through in their life. 
And no wonder it's affecting their health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And you brought up a really great point that we women, especially, sorry, guys, I, I, women just have that added layer. And I know that's talking to my guy friends and, and everything too. And that is that women we're programmed to believe that our worth is, is based on how we look Yep. and that we're not lovable. If we have an extra, if we have pudgy legs or, you know, fat around the, the, the stomach or we, our breasts are too big or they're too small or they're the day I heard Shania Twain say in an interview that her legs were too big. I was just like, okay, if, if a woman (laughs) has millions of dollars and, and millions of men would do anything to have her, if, if she feels that she's not enough, what hope do the rest of us have? Right. Right. And, and then you add in the cultural Mm -hmm. and the chauvinistic that women are second class citizens. I was speaking with one client who was Asiatic background. And she had literally been taught, told by her parents, very matter of factly, that she was worth less than a pound of rice because she was a female. And it was at a time when in China, they were only allowed to have one offspring and they ended up with a girl and and men and boys were considered way more valuable. And they were really upset that they did not have a boy. So imagine to be told that. Yeah, imagine that imprint. Mm-hmm. Right, you are worth less now. Great, uh, wonderfully, she's she's doing amazing now. And you brought up another point: trauma. I have yet, and I'm sure you'll corroborate this. I have yet to meet somebody who has autoimmune conditions that has not had some form of trauma. And I know that. Uh, Dr. Amy, like I was recently talking with even one of our mutual friends who is an expert in, in multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. And she said the very same thing, which is also an autoimmune neurological condition that every single one of her clients has had trauma. And if they're not, if they don't believe that they have trauma, there's a very good possibility that they just may not realize it. One, because they may have tamped it down so far, right? Because it was so traumatic. Right. Or because our society looks at it as, well, that's not trauma. That's just normal. That's to be expected. What do you mean a man groped you? Well, you must have been asking for it. Right. right? Yep. And then, Very common. right. So there's the personal trauma. And I'll add in there, like, um, I did this very unscientific experiment, informal experiment. One time I was in a doctor's lounge, I was doing my internal medicine rotation. And we got talking about bullying as children. And I asked the question, who here has been bullied And every single doctor put up their hand. So that may be one reason why we get into what we do. But on the other hand, that's trauma, and it's setting us up for failure. And so there's examples of personal trauma, then there's intergenerational trauma where mm-hmm. our parents and grandparents have experienced trauma and they have passed their their feelings, their fears, their responses onto us through their teaching. Right. It's been yep. well documented in the offspring, for instance, of Holocaust victims. It has that we can actually see it in their in their genes, in their DNA. Yes. Yep. And that's the next one that. I lovingly call epigenetic PTSD Mm -hmm. and trauma. And that is where, as Dr. Amy, you just mentioned, that they now realize that trauma actually modifies the expression of your DNA. And so that fear responses can be passed down to offspring, even if we've never met them. Physical, it impacts us physically. Like they've shown that people who were the offspring of the former uh, Civil War POWs in the the Mm -hmm. States, that children that were born afterwards 
had a higher mortality rate and, and a decreased longevity compared to their siblings who were raised in the same household. And the only difference between them was that they were born afterwards, right? So when we start to think back, go, huh, based on my culture, mm -hmm and my country's historical background, and maybe whatever personal history that I know of in my family, how much trauma we all collectively experienced and that I am bearing the brunt of. And this yeah. is where that trauma may be impacting us without us even knowing. And what I have realized and what I re realized and back then is that Yes, I was doing everything right that I knew of consciously. But what I didn't realize, and just like an iceberg, you know, has like the biggest, baddest, most dangerous part of it is the Hulk underneath the surface. Underneath. The hidden part, yep. Right. The dangerous part, the Titanic yep. found out the hard way Yep. to be facetious, speaking of traumas, that our unconscious programming and the unconscious trauma and the unconscious fears and belief systems that we carry with us, which is basically our hard wiring in our unconscious mind that runs the show 99% of the time, mm -hmm. causes massive inefficiencies, energy inefficiencies. And just like you can take, I, I have a, a an iMac over here. I'm looking over here because my iMac is sitting over there, brand new, got it two weeks into COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wasn't able to get like all the normal stuff done with it. And I'm like thinking to myself, this is a piece of crap. Like I've never had an iMac before. I, I was a <laughs> MacBook Pro before girl, yep. you know, and I had this 10 year old MacBook Pro that I just loved and I babied along and, mm -hmm. and, and, and then my brother spilt some wine on it. And, mm -hmm. and so it was kind of kaput and I'm like, Oh no, I got to do something. What am I going to do? I need a computer. So I got this iMac and I'm like, what is wrong with this computer? It's supposed to be like the best of the best. It's Apple, right? Like, right, right. Did they go to pot like in the last 10 years since I bought my last one? Like what's going on? And this went on for months and months and months where it would freeze. I'd get the wheel of death and, and I, I was on the phone constantly with Apple. They, my iCloud wasn't syncing across my devices. They, they couldn't figure it out. The iCloud engineers could not figure it out. Like literally, I, I was on like a first name basis with all like the top supervisors in Apple. I, I had their cell phone numbers, yes. <laughs> like, right? Like they were doing their best. They couldn't figure it out. And finally lockdown ended, you know, the first time. And I was able to take it back to the place where I bought it and said, look, mm -hmm. this is a piece of poop. Right. And and I don't want this, There's, but there's got to be something. What can we do here? And they're like, I don't know, ma'am. We're, we're all, all we can do is like wipe it clean and, and, and start it right from scratch. You'll lose everything on it. It's the best that we can do. I'm like, I can't use it anyway. Just do what you got to do. And so they, they, they did. They, they, they wiped it clean. And I get it back. And aside from the fact that none of my documents or anything on there, I'm like, wow, this yes. is like really, really, really well. This is like, I, it's like, it's brand new. This is like, it's supposed to, right? What was the difference? The very first time that I bought it from them, they transferred all the information from my beloved MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. And without me knowing it, it had a programming glitch that I, I just put down to, oh, it's old. That's why it's a little slower. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have enough RAM, right? No, and that programming glitch got transferred over into my beautiful, sleek, new, high-performing iMac and made it run like crap. And that is unfortunately what the faulty programming yeah. happened with us. And so what I've realized is that you can do everything right. And if those energy efficiencies are sucking the energy out of you, like energy vampires, like Harry Potter's Dementors, just sucking the life right out of you, then 
you're going to crash and burn yeah. like I did. And that's so, what happened. Talk to me about that, the crash and burn, because yeah. that's really where I think a lot of the, the thyroid patients fall into is that they will either in the very beginning before they're diagnosed or while they're trying to find a diagnosis, find out what's wrong with them, they will be in that fight or flight mode. Like, what is wrong with me? Oh, I'm super really tired. I'm tired all the time, but I want to know what's wrong with me and I'm anxious and I'm depressed at the same time. And it's kind of like this back and forth where you can almost see the car crash coming. I mean, a perfect analogy and using your situation and your experience, you can see them headed toward that wall. And mm -hmm. And a lot of it is, I mean, number one, it's that genetic switch. Like you said, epigenetics can be good, but they can be bad as well. We can use epigenetics to reverse something and not turn on a gene like an Alzheimer's gene, but we can, epigenetics can work the other way and that it does flip on that Hashimoto switch. And then it starts affecting sex hormones and it starts affecting cortisol. So what do you see in those, that beginning stage? Well, I mean- it might have been going on for a while for you, but kind of that beginning stage of crash and burn before someone is going to hit the wall. What is going on with them physiologically? What's going on with their adrenals? What's going on with the cortisol? How is it affecting autoimmune? Can you tie that together? Oh, absolutely. That's an awesome question. Thanks, Dr. Amy. When you are initially under stress, you're in survival mode. and and, and this is, we, we need survival mode, right? That's historically what kept us alive, right? It's that, you know, you may have heard of fight or flight or freeze or faint. Dr. Mm -hmm. Hans Selye coined those terms. Dr. Hans Selye is, is considered the father of, of a stress. Mm -hmm. And because he not only understood that stress impacts us all, he documented the very real physical impacts of it. And so when we're first in fight or flight or freeze or faint, as the case may be, we, we're hardwired. There's no right or wrong. We're hardwired to, to either run like a gazelle or to turn and fight like a honey badger or to freeze and just shiver and hope they don't notice us like a rabbit or to faint like a possum and play dead and hope they don't notice us. All right, it's we 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 fall into one of those categories, and again, no right or wrong. It is what it is. Our adrenaline ramps up, and we get ready for whatever we need to do, right, to hopefully stay alive. Then, as time goes on, and and most animals, like say a gazelle is being chased by a lion, that gazelle will run for its life, literally. And then hopefully if it, if it leaves the lion behind within about 20 minutes, it literally just shakes it off and it goes back to grazing. Yeah. Very rarely in the, in the animal kingdom, do they go out of what's called that acute or that initial phase. You either survive or you don't. Right. Right. It's not like an Iron Man of, of being chased by a lion. Yeah, they're not worrying about like, am I going to get chased again in another five minutes? Is no. another lion going to come in an hour? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and the thing is, that is what we need to happen to keep us alive in the moment. And if they do need to, you know, go on a more than just a sprint, we have our our next stress hormone, cortisol, that ramps up, and it's like for the long haul. It's not as effective as the adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's like the long hauler for us. It, it keeps us going and going and going. And again, in the animal kingdom, it'll get used and then it has a chance to rest and relax, right? And reset. Yep. Mm -hmm. We are the only animals in the universe that we know of who don't just stay in the moment. We, we have this amazing ability to think about the past. And because we are up until now hardwired for by millennia of cautious pessimism, pessimism that kept us alive, right? There's that fear-based mm -hmm. teaching, right? It kept us alive, but at the same time, it makes us prone to go back and go, 
worry about that or you know dwell on that fight that we had with our spouse or or that negative review we got at work or as you said future pace and go oh my god how am i going to pay my mortgage this month or what's going to happen am i going to lose my job if i take two weeks vacation even though i have it coming to me right mm -hmm. we're the ones we're the only ones that can live in the past and in the future at least in our heads yep and when we do because we are for now hardwired i'm on a i'm on a mission to change this right we are hardwired to think negatively and and automatically go to that we're not thinking mm -hmm. about the wonderful time that we had or the wonderful time we're going to have we're thinking about all the negative things that can happen and go wrong mm -hmm. right that is we're putting ourselves constantly in stress mode and we don't get a chance to have a break from it and what dr Selye showed was that when you are under chronic stress the physical impacts on the body are that the cortisol causes you to gain weight mm -hmm. it messes with your sleep it messes with your hormones right? It yep. increases your blood sugar, which is why you're more prone to diabetes. You're more prone to heart disease. You're more prone to infections because it, 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 your immune system takes a nosedive. Well, guess what? Your immune system is also necessary for your proper functioning of, of your hormones and, mm -hmm. and all of your internal workings. And and when your immune system goes haywire, inflammation takes place. And I'm sure you've heard that word from Dr. Amy because she's amazing and deals with inflammation in her way a lot. I know. It's like <laughs> one place I don't have to explain what inflammation is. Right. Inflammation is a derangement of the immune system and it can result in allergies, in sensitivities, in autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's, like multiple sclerosis and, and a host of other ones. And it can also, because your immune system is depressed, you can be more prone to cancer. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and so that is how, how chronic stress ramps up inflammation mm -hmm. and causes or contributes to autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's. And when you think back to the, what I just said about the energy efficiency if you can heal the energy inefficiencies, all of a sudden your body has that ability to, to mm -hmm. calm the stress response, allow the cortisol to go back down mm -hmm. and to upregulate the immune system genes, downregulate the inflammatory genes. And, and then lo and behold, you can start healing. Until that point, until you take care of that very important factor, you can do everything right, even with respect to the Hashimoto's and, and trying to heal it, taking all of Dr. Amy's great advice. And if you are constantly under stress and strain and trauma and, 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 and living the impacts of that, mm -hmm. you're not going to get better. Well, I'm glad you said that because it's, so admittedly, stress is something that I tend to brush over. I pay attention to it, but I need to circle back to it more because in talking to you today, I'm thinking of all of the patients who they'll write me and they'll say, well, you know what? I'm, I'm just, I'm at, a, I'm at a standpoint with my weight. I'm still experiencing a lot of fatigue. Maybe my cycles are still messed up and I dive into the biology. Okay, where are your, where are your thyroid levels? Maybe we need to increase the medication. Maybe we need to test again. Maybe we need to do, do this. How's your diet? But stress, if we just come back to that, which everybody is under and then some more than others, but we, we're all experiencing it that could be the very root cause of the inflammation that is occurring that is preventing what we're trying to do from working. And that's why certain patients are experiencing, you know, an inability to lose weight again. And I'm looking at the numbers going, but they're all optimal, but they're great. We have you more than optimal or you're, you're, you're eating well, this, that, and they're doing all the things like you said that you, you were doing. Even before your crash, you were doing all the things. Of course you were. You were a chiropractor. You were eating organic. You were doing everything. And they might be doing everything too, but at the same time, not paying enough attention 
or the right attention. We don't want to hyper-focus on stress, but not paying the right attention to the stress in their life and not dealing with it in the proper way. Yeah. It's one very important pillar. Very Um, important. That is why, and I I love giving analogies. And so I don't know that you (laughs) do not that I do it often. And when I'm driving, I love to go fast. And so while I've never driven one, the idea of driving a Bugatti and going as fast as you can, just like that to me is like bucket list, man. That's, that's mm-hmm. on my bucket list to do it. do it. I'll have yeah, to borrow somebody else's because I think I'm too practical to buy one myself. But anyway, the point is, it's like when I talk energy efficiencies, it's like you're behind the wheel of that Bugatti and you've got your foot down on the the gas pedal, like right down and you're ready to go as fast and far as you can, but your left foot is riding the brake. Right? Very nice analogy. Love that. Yeah. Doesn't that make sense? It's like, you're either not going to go as far and fast as you want or stuff is going to wear out. Mm-hmm. Then you add into it, let's call it the functional medicine fuel of putting everything right into the gas tank. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm doesn't even have to have impurities if you have impurities if if you're going the conventional route there's probably impurities in there just saying but we're going we're talking the functional medicine fuel right right the best of the best of the best and what if there's a leak in the gas line right Mm -hmm. so the fuel is not getting to where it needs to go it's all energy inefficiencies and places that they can be patched up that when you take your foot off the gas pedal, you make sure that you have the best of the best fuel going in and that it's getting to where it needs to go and that everything is working, you know, in perfect synchrony because that's what we are, right? We are this amazing self-healing organism with a hundred billion brain cells, right? We are capable of far more in so many ways, including healing ourselves mm-hmm. of autoimmune conditions that we can correct all of that, then we get to drive that Bugatti as fast as we want. Oh, that's so sexy and such a great analogy. I love it. (laughs) I love (laughs) that. It's so perfect. And just to circle back before we get into what what can people do, just some Mm -hmm. basic practical tips, I want to circle back to something that you said about stress turning on cancer because we, we think about stress and we think about somebody will have a migraine or they'll just be low energy, but we don't think about the big ones. Like our, our colleague who specializes in MS said, stress is one of those triggers that flips the switch. When we're talking about cancer, I remember when my dad got his cancer diagnosis of lymphoma, there was a major stressful event that happened a month or two before. So we all know that we have cancer genes. Everybody does. You're not going to escape that. You're, you have some messed up, funky little genes in your body that might just stay funky for a while or because of stress or because of toxins or heavy metals or whatever exposure, it can turn that on. And then cancer goes, hello, I'm here, unfortunately. So I'm really glad you brought that up because a lot of people don't attribute the that turning on of any kind of disease, be it autoimmune, Hashimoto's, cancer, MS, any disease, they don't go back to that root and attribute it to stress, be it past stress, childhood, generational, or just what you're dealing with right now. Mm-hmm. They're not really tying all the pieces together. So I'm really glad that you brought that up. Not to scare people, but just to make them aware that We need to move on to this next step of doing some practical things, maybe working with someone, but let's, we'll get into how they can work with you in a minute, but can you give them some, what, what do you tell people to do right now just to start that ball rolling of decreasing the stressors in their life, present and past? Mm, I love that question. Thank you. And the, the first thing that I recommend is that I, I teach what, are, what I call SOS tools and techniques. And, and the reason I call them SOS, for those of a certain age and beyond, SOS stands for Save Our Souls. And it's, it was the emergency, like the signal, distress signal that ships used to send out. And, and so 
one of the things to know, and the reason why we often don't do exactly what we need to be doing to help ourselves, like calling Dr. Amy and say, yo, I need help here, is because when you are under stress, the, the survival mode literally like takes your your frontal, it's called your prefrontal cortex, your executive team here offline, mm -hmm. right? In other words, and, and when I say your executive team, it's what's responsible for being able to think clearly, to, to remember like your working memory, to think logically, to come up with creative solutions, to, to make good decisions and then act on those good decisions. Oh, and emotional inhibition, right? All of that is in your rock star executive team that you have in behind your forehead, your prefrontal cortex. And you want it that way when you're in survival mode, because hypothetically, if you were being you know, chased by a, a saber toothed tiger, that's not the time to go, huh? Let me think about this for a moment. Should I, do you think it'd be better for me to run right now or should I stand and fight? No, no. Right. That is when, just like the gazelle or the honey badger, it's time for action and, and doing whatever you are hardwired to do. In other words, take the thinking out of it completely. The challenge is when we are under chronic stress as we are, right? Our emotion center, our five alarm emotion center, our amygdala in our brain is just like, wah, 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 mm -hmm. danger, danger, Will Robbins. And it's like the sirens are going off all the time. Right. Anybody live near a, a busy fire station? And the, the sirens are going like all the time. Yeah, we're in New York City all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, exactly. So, so when it's that case, guess what? This is like wiped off the mat map. And it's like, have a thought in your head. Good luck. Brain fog. Oh, yeah. Right. Confusion. Oh, yeah. Dr mm -hmm. Crying at the drop of a hat. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. How about falling off the handle at your loved ones or boss when you really shouldn't have? Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. right. There's that emotional inhibition that's not there. Right? So it's, it's, this is why it's so important for us to have the SOS tools and techniques so that then we can actually kickstart our, our executive team back in action so that we can start making the changes that we need. And it, it, it can take just seconds. One of the first things that I, I love to teach is that your actions create your feelings. So when you are feeling down and, and low and tired and you're like this, oh my God, oh my God, I just, mm -hmm. right? All of you do this, like, and just see how you feel. Yeah, like, you, just, uh, you probably feel yeah. like crap, yep. right? Then sit up or stand up straight. There's a reason why I stand in my, in my, my little stand up office. Mm -hmm. Right. It's so that I can stand up straight and 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 shoulders back, chin up, gaze straight forward, a little smile playing on your face. Right. And stand with your feet a little bit apart. We women are, you know, we're taught to like, oh, we have to be demure. We have to close down like this. No, 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 no. Let's get the feet apart. Let's put your hands on your your hips and then smile. And if you need to stick a pencil in it and do a dash. Why? Because when you wish, not only does it look funny, go ahead and laugh. You're allowed to laugh at me. It. I'm totally happy for people to laugh. It's causing your muscles, smile muscles to engage. And all of this, all these muscles that you're using actually send the message up to your brain. I'm strong. I'm confident. I have what it takes and I'm happy. And so the brain says, oh, she's happy. I'm going to give her more serotonin. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's strong and confident. I don't need to have the five alarms going. No drugs needed. No drugs needed. There's a reason <laughs> why in basic boot camp or whatever they call it for, for the, the military, basic training, that's what it's called, that they, that they spend so much time on posture, right? Because your, your body language talks actually even more to you than it does to others. So by doing that and putting a smile on your face, and, and I recommend tying this to a habit, oh, like going to the bathroom, 
we, we oh, tend to do okay. throughout the day, right? So every time you go to wash your hands, you can wash your hands first. Mm-hmm. And then stand up straight and smile. And for good measure, tell yourself how proud you are of yourself and how much you love each other. How, how much you love yourself. I'm proud of you. You're beautiful. You're a genius. You are awesome. And walk out. Yes. Right? How long did that take? I know. I love it. It actually does make a difference. You go to the bathroom in a day. Yeah. Right? So every hour or two, whatever, it's like yep. you can reset your stress response. Just like that. Put Take lipstick or a... Uh, a dry erase pen or marker or something. And, and I, I did this and my sons, my sons are used to me. I, I did this where I, 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 I drew like a big heart, like right where their face would go. Mm-hmm. And wrote, I love you Aww. on the mirror so that every time they looked in the mirror, or I looked in the mirror, guess what? They see, I love you. I love that. That's so amazing. That's something yeah. nice that you can do for somebody else. And then for you, well, write write it for yourself too, so that when you're looking in the mirror, you're like, "Hello, sexy." <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And if you're worried about what other people think, we'll deal with that another time because that's like another that's another fear. Just and even if you can't, it's just that it's that reminder to yourself that every single time that you you go to the bathroom, smile and tell yourself how much you love yourself and how amazing you are and how proud you are of yourself and stand up straight and chin up and look at yourself because that's also speaking to your inner child, that wounded inner child, because your inner child sees you, which happens to look probably a lot like your parents, especially your same sex parent. And it's like giving your, the message to your wounded inner child from your same sex parent, perhaps the message that you never got from them. We never got, this is definitely a part A. Because we need to, we need to dive more into this in a part B. But just even that one thing that you gave us, Dr. Irene, is so powerful. I mean, it just, it literally just, just doing that with you changed mm-hmm. my demeanor. Just putting a smile, I'm like, oh, hey, this is really cool. You know, that that changed my demeanor. So I, I, I love that tip. Code word: stick a pencil in. I know, stick a pencil in. I love it. But that, that's so powerful. So I really believe, I mean, number one, we have to bring you back on because I do want to dive into all those other things because a lot of people have deep-seated thoughts of and, and cares about what other people think about them. And that's driving their their body to respond in a certain way. I have certain patients that they even go into a medication change anxious and fearful because, and they, it's almost like they set themselves up for a side effect or not being able to tolerate it because they believe it in their head beforehand. We need to get, gee, we, we just need to get more into this. Um, so before I let you leave and there will be a part B, we'll plan this out before I let you leave. If people like myself are just enthralled by your story and what you do, can you tell them how, if they want to work with you, if they want to go deeper, if they know, if they're listening and they're not in their head the whole time you've been talking and saying, I know I have trauma. I know I have childhood trauma. Maybe they went through something very similar to what you went through with an alcoholic parent that that just ingrained in themselves that they're not good enough or they have to perform. How can they get in touch with you? How can they work with you? I love it. And I'm so happy. I'd love to come back. Thank you for Definitely. Yeah. For that. One of the things that I gave you was a workbook that your listeners can download. Mm -hmm. And it is it it works through the what I call the five step blueprint to shift from stress to success and the four major blocks that are derailing their success and blocking them. And it's an awareness. It's called awakening awareness around your success blocks. And remember what I said, success is all areas, including your health and energy. And I guarantee that if if you are being derailed in one area of your life, like with Hashimoto's, it's impacting other areas of your life if you go looking for it. Yeah. It, this is a beautiful exercise because I say awareness is 80% of the battle and the solution. Even just by by doing these exercises that are in this workbook, you can start to go, huh, oh, mm, wow, right, to give you that sense. And then if you choose to go deeper, I do have a four-week boot camp. It's called the Retrain Your Brain Boot Camp, and it's all 
designed to release those blockages at an unconscious level at each of the five steps in the blueprint, as well as the four major steps. And I'll, I'll, I'll give like a sneak preview. Your faulty programming is one, your trauma is another. We go through self-sabotage and we go through fears and and really blast away. I, I mean, I, I, we could spend months on it and this four week boot camp has the biggest, baddest barriers that have been blocking you from having the health, life and happiness that you want. Mm -hmm. And and I will be running another it's self-study and I have a group led coaching version of it starting January 7th. So I'm sure that we can 17th, January 17th, that I'm sure we can get that out to your listeners as well. Oh, 100 percent Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we will put all of those links in the show notes for everyone to grab along with the contact information for you to join that group program or the four week boot camp whatever appeals to the person. But I love, I love that you're putting it all in four weeks because people want to get shit done. Like they just want to like dive in and do it and get results. And so I love that you did an intensive, a four week. And I think people will, I think that speaks to a lot of people because they want, they want results and they want them fast. And that's a great way to give it to them. Thank you so much. Thank for coming you. on here. I mean, if, if, if people are listening, they couldn't see my face during the whole time, but I was just enthralled with your story and the information you provided. And it just, it's so powerful and it has even impacted me and how I will further deal with my patients really focusing a little bit more on that stress piece because it needs to be. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will be talking again, and I'm sure all of the listeners will grab your download. So thank you, my friend. Love you so much. All right. We will talk soon.